All right, what is up, Apex family? Uh, Sam Carlson here with a pretty cool lesson slash experience that I want to share with you. About a year and a half ago, um, our agency had a really amazing, happy consequence happen. Um, we learned how to reduce our churn by a landslide, and uh, we fell upon it. It was something that happened naturally because of what we were doing with Upex. But uh, what we learned and how we did that, I want to share with you today. So let's jump into it. So no uh, fancy lighting set up for me today, just uh, some straight value on how to eliminate churn concern. Doesn't mean you're going to eliminate your churn. That's a natural part of any business. But when your churn is too high, when you're losing clients so fast, that it will that will really affect your business um, in a lot more ways than you think. Not only does it affect its profitability, it affects your ability to be able to grow. It affects your confidence you're building. It really is a daisy chain of uh, second order consequences that get out of control. Um, and I'm not some genius that figured out you know how to hack the process. Um, I've done a lot of studying and things like that. But one of the really neat consequences that happened when we used Upex was we naturally found ourselves in a position where we could say, okay, we have a whole bunch of extra time that we didn't have before. What should we do with it? And so today I'm going to walk you through that journey, how we did it and what we do today to not only reduce churn and eliminate churn concern, but also how to upsell and increase our lifetime value. It was interesting. Um, and if you guys have seen any of my other videos, I kind of like to do just everything on a mirror board just to kind of, as I'm thinking of these things, I want to put them down as I'm going and I don't necessarily want to use a slide or anything like that. But anyway, um, at the, here's a, uh, an excerpt from, go high levels, level up day back at the end of 2020. And um, they unveiled a pretty scary statistic. I'll just read it. Uh, at the 2020 level up day, we unveiled some pretty scary statistics showing that the average agency's churn rate was over 60% and that the average agency wasn't able to maintain more than a handful of clients at any given point in time. I think uh, it was something to the effect of couldn't handle more than five clients at a time. You are not going to make a living having just five clients. And, um, and if you do, as soon as you lose one, you are in a tough situation. Um, and it's funny. Uh, so that was from high level. I've been in this business for seven years. I've seen the same thing, just keeping clients and other agencies. It's a big problem. And in fact, I think Rob Bailey on one of his ads said the average uh, retention time frame was one and a half months. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, to frame out what is going on, I want to go through a situation where we understand the actual problem, what the actual problem is, because I'm guessing there might be something today that you've never thought of. It took us some hard looking before we figured it out. But the question is right here, why is it so hard to make clients stick? To understand that, I want to I want to go through what the standard agency uh, cycle is. Okay, so the the standard agency cycle is something like this: you go and you get a client. Okay, and there's a couple things that are on here, like do your onboarding, get them set up, start going right, and then you jump right in to generating leads. I mean, that is what you're there to do. Your job is to generate leads. Why overcomplicate things? Well, as soon as you start generating leads, then you jump down here to some kind of outcome. All right, now this is where that initial drop off happens with a lot of agencies. One, you have some people who are either happy with the volume of leads and know they need to improve their end of the bargain, that does happen, or you come out with what is called a, you know, just a regular old general fail. And people attribute this to things like the leads, the lead quality was low. It was poor quality. Um, I 
generally think that is a cop out and that's a misunderstanding of what's going on, but people say that nonetheless. Um, or, you know, this is just not worth the effort. The amount of time and effort and work that it takes to convert a lead into a unit of revenue doesn't seem like it's worth it to some people because they don't understand what's going on and what they're doing. Um, that leads to churn. All right. Now, in the event that we do have a win, okay, I'll just continue on in the cycle of, a, of the typical agency is we start going into the communication pattern. And you notice right here, it says reactive communication. And what I mean by that is a common um, habit where we're either the client is getting results. So we think mm, there's no need for us to do anything. They're, they're happy, they're getting results. Uh, see no evil, hear no evil. That's kind of the, the mindset that we default into. And so that's number one, that is actually a big problem. And then number two is, and this is the, your worst problem. This is probably, mm, if they make it past the win column here and they go up to this next phase, the number one reason why you're losing clients is because your results taper off and your clients are the first one to make you aware of it. All right, as soon as that happens, they instantly lose trust and faith in you. You have lost credibility and you are now entirely reactive to anything you do. Any type of advice that you give, anything that you do will, will be perceived as um, deflection. Like if you say, well, you need to do better at following up with your leads, this, that or, that, or the other, you have no positioning to communicate those types of things because you've lost all credibility, all right? And so thus they churn, all right? And you have to go get more clients. Now, that is, um, you know, maybe some broad strokes. You may have experienced something different, but my agency definitely had times where we did better or worse at different parts of this. But I gotta be honest with you, things changed as soon as we started learning a couple things. Okay, so here's a couple things that we need to know, okay? One, clients as much as they want to brag about how good they are at marketing or sales, or you get them in the door, I'll convert them. They are not good at it. They don't understand it. Okay. Um, they do not understand that leads require quick, consistent, and personalized responses. Okay. Um, the reason we define a lead generated off of social media or anything else really as cold is because that lead came in because they raised their hand. Hey, I have this problem. Or I have this need I want fulfilled, whatever it is, but you haven't established any trust or credibility. Now, depending who your clients are in their community, some have more trust and credibility than others, but a lot of small businesses do, I mean, they have their sphere, their small sphere of influence. And the reason they're reaching out to you is because they need help expanding at reach. So for the most part, those clients do not have trust or credibility and they can't sell anything until they, they cross those bridges. Okay. So that's number one. Um, number two, they have a big vision about what success looks like in their own minds. They have visualized. This is what's going to happen, right? I'm, I'm buying this thing today and then I'm going to be rich tomorrow. This is the oversimplification of course, but this is really what their brain is doing. Okay. Any failure, creates confusion and loss of conversion. Let me say it a different way. Any failed expectation creates confusion and an instant loss of conversion. So once again, here we are where we lose trust and credibility. Those are the sticking tools for people to stick with us. They need to trust us. They need to feel uh, like the path forward is clear um, and that we have things under control. All right. When lacking information, people make up their own clarity. When people don't have a, a, a good plan, they don't have a clear path forward. They're going to make up the boogeyman in the, in the closet. They are going to make up information. However, irrational it is rational to them. And this is why. Okay. You did a poor job at defining what value, what the expectation should be. Um, the old saying in business under promise over deliver, right? That's something you want to do, but it's also 
a, a frame, a, a positioning, a posture that you want to take when you're meeting with clients is you need to define what is our initial goal. All right. So we want to, we want to reach big goals when possible, but sometimes we want to say, okay, I, I love the idea that we want to, you know, 20,000 X our investment next month, but let's talk about your business. What would you see as a win, a lay down? What if we could do this, right? So we want to do that. And then we want to front load the value. So your minimum, your MVP, your, your first tier of value, your, your opening offer. When you do that, you want to hold back a little bit so you can front load more value and over deliver. Okay. That's going to really make them feel good. And, uh, it's going to endear, uh, you to them, um, confirm, adopt and usage probably the biggest thing. And if you're using go high level, which I know a lot of you are, we love that tool. One of the biggest things is you can pare down that offering. So your first offer is a lot of different things, but the biggest hurdle you're going to get is not to sell people on the idea of your initial offering is to get them to use your initial offering. Okay. And so your initial time frame, and I'll show you tactically how we did this, um, your initial goals up front, you need to confirm that they're adopting this new tool. Okay. And that they're using it, right? It needs to be simple. Um, you need to identify some wins and then this is the big one. And this is the thing that fell in our laps and we didn't realize it until we built our entire, and it really had fixed our entire business. And that was use proactive communication and never reactive communication. So what I'm about to show you this evolved approach to reducing churn and keeping clients happy for a long time. So they stick, it entirely revolves around proactive communication. Okay. And never being reactive in that communication. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about some of the tactics that we've used, but what's important to understand is we had this big, this big shift. Um, we didn't plan for this big shift. Okay. What ended up happening with our agency before our agent, before Upex, what we would do is we would go in and between, you know, we'd have staff members and people in support that would be spending a lot of time herding cats, starting new campaigns, optimizing campaigns, just really focusing on just producing. I mean, it's hard enough to keep the leads coming in, let alone keeping people happy. So when we, got Upex and we started using Upex because it automated our lead generation. What we ended up doing was turning our time then on to support directly. How can we offer the best level of support? My, my on the agency side, my done, my do it yourself support is 10 times better than my a, my agency was previously ever in its history, we out support and provide better communication than anything. And we keep clients for a long time because of that. So here is what we learned by having all of this time to focus on support. All right. We'd go through the same thing. Okay. So this is effectively what we've got here. We've got before and we've got after. All right. So get clients. Okay. No big deal there. What we really started doing, simplify and confirm usage. I said that before, but we noticed when we had time to actually look at it, that a lot of our users were excited about our product, got in, bought it, logged in one time, and then never used it. Okay. That is a huge problem. And it was a red flag for us. Um, I'm going to, before I, I talk about the protocol that we use to fix that, I'm going to go through a couple of other of these. So simple, uh, simplify and confirm usage and then establish proactive communication. So what I mean by that, and again, this fell into our lap, you can do with this information, you can create your own workflows, your own protocols, your own thresholds for, you know, usage or whatever it is. What we ended up doing was we had a two week window inside our two week window. This was after onboarding. We wanted to make sure that clients had obviously logged in, launched a campaign and were getting leads. Those were the three criteria that we wanted them to do in the first two weeks. If they had done that, 
then we could move them into this phase down here. Okay. So confirm output before we move into upsell number one, which I'll talk to you about that here in a second. We want to say, Hey, we established all these things. They're using it. They're getting results. So we have to confirm that they're getting results before we do anything else. And again, that time frame is important. Okay. Um, if you go past the two weeks, people are going to start wondering, Hey, what happened to that thing we bought? What, what's going on with that? Right. And they're going to churn. So these are the basic steps. And then we get into check-in. Okay. So check-in, if we're confirming the output, here's, what's cool about check-in. First of all, when you check in, people are either excited or they're uh, curious, but they're not confused and unhappy. Okay. Because not enough time has gone by. So if they're excited, then we just, you know, encourage them and say, Hey, um, by the way, we want to let you know, we also provide X, Y, Z, right? And this is your value ladder. This is what we provide on the back end. Okay. And if they're not happy, it's like, Oh, or not, I wouldn't say not happy, but maybe they're curious as to listen, we're getting leads, but is there a way we can improve the response and the engagement, the appointments, whatever, whatever the next step is. And that is an opportune time for you to walk in and say, Hey, um, our SAS approach, our do it yourself approach is awesome, but it's not for everyone. So one of the things that we offer is a done for you approach where we'll do these things for you. So you can focus on this and that's upsell number one. All right. Now, by the way, the reason that you can have an easy conversation at that point is because you've got trust, you've got credibility, and they are 100% clear from where they started to where they're at, what's going on. So there's no confusion. Confusion is the enemy to conversion. All right, let's get down to um, outcome. So after that call, whatever happens, maybe they just decide most of the time at upsell number one, they're just going to say, no, I'm, I'm cool. Let's keep going. Um, they're going to start getting leads. All right. One thing, you know, again, people maybe sometimes overestimate their abilities and what they're able to do. So sometimes people will win uh, and you can upsell different features. Uh, we, you know, there's a lot of things. I mean, the, your value ladder is entirely based on your proficiency and what you do best. Okay. So whatever you offer, you can always upsell after people are happy. Fell at this point, because we've established proactive communication, we've gone through all of these processes. They know who we are. They trust us. We can identify why we're failing. Say, do you think it might be worth it to try maybe a done for you approach? It's more money, but um, I think the overall return on your investment might be more and it might come faster. What are your thoughts? Right. And then that's where we can start adding value. Makes sense. Um, again, the big thing, we don't want to be re be reactive. We don't want to be delayed in our communication. All right. If you'll notice this entire side here, uh, we get the client and then we are in front of them communicating every step of the way, what is going on. We're telling them, or, Hey, you know, if they're not generating leads, we're going to jump in there and say, Hey, what do we need to do to help you start getting leads? Okay. So this is all very proactive communication. We don't let that process stop. We keep it going. All right. Um, if we maintain clarity and they continue to get results and they're learning how to do whatever, you know, they're, they're getting results with what we're doing, their conversion is going to get even deeper. All right. And what the cool thing is, is our support gets easy. It's a lot harder to provide support to a confused or disgruntled person that brings a problem to you. And now you have to unwind that whole knot, untie the knot and straighten things out. That is a hard situation to do. And maybe you'll get by uh, one time doing that. But the next time there's a reactive situation, they're gone. And overall, proactive communication, continual communication, people stick. Okay, this is where people really stick around. All right. I want to, um, again, go back to just the bullet points. This is, we fell into this. We're, I, we're not, you know, the most amazing agency ever. We, we, we try and do a really good job, but, um, if you get lucky and you learn something, 
that's just how it goes. And in this case, we were able to luck into Upex. Uh, it was a tool that we saw the value in not only for ourselves from a campaign creation and all that kind of stuff, but we didn't account for what it would do for the rest of our business. Okay. So number one, proactive communication leads to upsells, easy support, open minds, and happy customers. When I say open minds, as soon as somebody has a negative situation, they will lock down. They will not listen to you. Doesn't matter. You are not giving advice and you go back into a sales persuasion, uh, you know, uh, communication. That's not good. Churn is a product of reactive problem solving communication. Churn is a product of confusion and churn is a product of lack of use. By the way, people just don't use stuff because that's habitual. That's what they default. People are, are really used to buying things and then putting them in storage and never using them again. All right. And then last off, people buy more when they trust you. So I don't need to get too confusing about this uh, to a theory. There's not a lot of you know, tactics or protocols in this. There's a framework, proactive communication, making your support the best it can be. If you do those two things, your product will be better. Your upsells will be easier than you've ever seen them before. So thanks for you. Or thanks for watching this video. And hopefully as you build out your Upex account, you're also seeing some of these happy consequences happening in your business. And if you need anything else, please reach out to support. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video.